times and, and, and good times. You know, the only time we really like leaning is through the good times. When it gets thin, that's when we have to really learn to lean on one another. And and, and stop believing all the hogwash that you you at your level best at loving when, when, when you know when you in your prime. You can be a lover when you're old man. Turn these feet. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Let's see how Paul sets this thing up. We're not going to do it. Well, if we're going to have a good relationship, the, the text in Ephesians chapter 5, and this is one of those that we try to steer away from most of the time, but a lot of times it's not even talking about us. In verse 21, the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Just think if we could just not only get the church to do that and get folk to, we can be examples for the world. Look how many divorces and marriages we would say if we would just learn to submit to one another, not out of fear of one another, but in the fear, in the respect of God. It says, why submit yourselves unto your own husbands as the Lord? And here is one that I really like. We read this all the time. You brethren, y'all like to stick your chest out there. But the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he's the savior of the body. Problem with that, we don't know what head is head. We don't know. Bible says that the husband is the head of the wife. In our text that I'm just reading to you, you don't see anything in there that entitles us to any selfish being. It's all about combining people being together. About, not about, about your ego, not about my ego. He said, he said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he's the savior of the body. He said, therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband when they are broke. He knows that. He, they ain't even looking at the scripture. They know that, sister. They said, in everything. But, he said, husband, love your wife, Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, after reading that, let that resonate. Here's the eyes on that page. So art me. You see that? Yeah. Did you hear all the things that Christ did? He gave himself for it. In other words, he didn't want to go shopping. <laughs> stop. Stop, stop testifying. <laughs> and I know sometimes you can go in dealers and they were just there yesterday and now you're with them and they know every dress, the color, size, price on it, but you got to stand there and watch. Do <laughs> everyone, you guys done the one. And don't say, I don't know, that ain't gonna look good on you. <laughs> just, just be very big. <laughs> you would look good in here. <laughs> Because as soon as you say the one that she really don't like, it's cheap, she 
your life is done right with God. And then you open your mouth. That's the one she going to get. Yeah. And ain't going to ever work. You're going to be frustrated with yourself for the rest of your life. I ain't not even say anything about the rest. She ain't never had no. So don't say nothing. <laughs> if you're a man, man that to love your wife. It authorizes you not to demand anything in return for love, but just the love. It doesn't give you a right to say, now because I love you, you drive the pickup and I'll drive the boat. You don't have any rights. Godly marriage is not, it's not about us anymore. Your marriage is not about you. I know that uh, and the world says all of these things. You know, you got to have some. I, I'm, I'm so sick of hearing that on TV. And, you know, in the world, you got to have fun. Now, you got to even have fun in your marriage. You can, but it's not about you. See, Jesus didn't die because it was about him, he died because it was about the church. And you got to make some sacrifices just not because it's about you. But because it's about what's best for the spouse. Amen. Take a job that you may not like, but that's the only way the one that you can support your family. You take it. Amen. You may have to walk an extra mile or two. I used to tell folks when me and Doc, I remember we had one old car. That's the car that had the hole in the gas tank. Remember we went to Kentucky and had to stop every 25 miles for gas? <laughs> We used to live around the corner on McCarty Drive. I never would forget 22, 27 McCarty Drive. My wife worked on the north side. I was in the military and I was in Indiana South. We had one car. I had to be to work at 3 o'clock in the morning. My wife was not home. Do you all that don't know me, I'm telling you, not 3 o'clock ain't her time. <laughs> don't go. Talk about honey this time. Don't be young. Don't be saying that. Don't even, don't even accidentally roll the wrong way in the bed. It's not the time. <laughs> so, rather than wake up, what you look for? See an ass jack. That's why I know all of those things. Strawberry field used to be that Walmart and all that stuff. I know all that. One way in, one way out. So, it's not about you. You have to make some sacrifices to make the marriage work. It's not about so much, it's not about what the wife wants. It's what's best for the family. It's not about, she has to be able to uh, uh, please every once in a while her husband, just like he pleases her. Uh, you know, every once in a while, cook his favorite dish. Maybe you can't afford what he likes favorite. Cook your favorite dish. Help him to like that. Uh, it's it's all that are involved. There are some subjective, some, uh, some subjective motives and priorities that we need to look at when we talk about marriage. And hopefully, when we get uh, back doing our workshops, we, we can work on those better. Uh, there, there, there should be though. You should have some expectations. If you go to work and you want to expect something. If both of y'all work outside the house, it's not necessarily her job to come home and do all the cooking and cleaning. While, while, while you watching uh, watching the game and said, is it ready yet? <laughs> we used to have a, I don't know if he was a friend or not. He used to come to our house and I had an easy chair. We used to let back. It, you know, we had been married two, three days. We, we'd been, we were veterans. So they used to come to our house and get that chair back. And I used to think, I don't need to let that chair back. I do. <laughs> throw his hands up on his chest and look over his shoulder. Got food ready yet? And I said, man, you get ready to get run up. I'll get it. <laughs> and I'm probably going to have to be the one to do the running. Run me, run you up. In other words, you, you don't take advantage of a situation. If both of you work outside the house. There has to be some compromise. You all have to agree on. Now, she has responsibilities 
But if you get home before she does a couple of hours before she does the work, Amen. you're going to have to cook. Amen. Or at least get it out and let it throng it all out. <laughs> Sweep the floor and take the garbage out and make the bed. You're going to have to do something. You can't just come in and get in that easy chair. Is it ready yet? Well, the next thing you know, you might be wearing it. Ready <laughs> But those expectations, if they get caught on yourself, are going to open the door for the devil. Because it doesn't take much in our society now for the devil to get wild and to get through. If we want to make our mates happy, feel find a way to love them. Love them, make them happy, fulfill them, provide them. Listen, if you're going to be together, don't you want to be happy? You want to fuss all the time? Now, I'm not saying fuss is going to be eliminated. What do you mean, right, John? <laughs> Praise. <laughs> You're going to have it. You're going to have it. Like I said this month, I already conceded. I'm going to lose. I ain't going to say nothing. Yeah. Take two to tango. Yeah. Uh, then. Modern psychology will tell you that when people are upset, they fit differently than they do when they're not upset. So when this happens in your marriage, whether it's a male, look at it as an event situation rather than a fuss or a fight. You view it differently. Oh, they just been. And let it fit. How do we learn to understand and love? Well, they got all kinds of designer books out. It starts with the Bible. Anybody not willing to read and take what the Bible says? God knew what he was doing. He made us. He made us male and female. He's the one that decided that we shouldn't be alone, male. And gave us a female. And so, if you want to learn, you don't have to look at designing women to learn how to put together a man. Listen and God. Treat one another with respect. You didn't take your spouse, whether it's a male or a female, to raise them. You took them because you loved them. Most of you folks that came to me for counseling when I was counseling before you got married, the very first question I asked, why y'all want to get married? Why do you think most people want to tell you they're going to get married? Because they're in love. I said, Lord, you won't mess it up for you. You're in love. You need marriage. <laughs> you know it's going to happen so you get married. Well, you're already in love. You love each other. What you want to get married for? You just stay in love. We learn that, though. You And, and marriage is not something uh, without structures other than God. Then when you start adding children, Amen. That brings on another, not, not a complication, but another dimension of that marriage. When you start bringing on children, you think that once you get the children up and you get the empty nest syndrome, then marriage will level out. Normally what happens, unfortunately, there is a parent that may have to come into play. They may not ever move in the house, but you're going to have to spend a lot of time with that parent who may become disabled. That adds another dimension to the marriage. Who knows? You may have a grown child that moves off, have a misfortune, have to come back home. That adds another dimension to the marriage. You've got to be flexible in that, but you've got to keep God's word in it. Without that, without that, I often wonder why it is that we are the only race of people that can't live. We used to live over there on, on uh, what was that? We lived Bramble, and there was a house across the street from us, smaller than the house we lived. Mm -hmm. And about 20 families of uh, Puerto Ricans moved in that house. About 20 of them. They slept all on the front porch and on the roof, <laughs> in the car, <laughs> in the driveway. But you know what? The whole time they lived, we never heard them fuss about anything. They didn't do that. 
They were quiet. They were quiet. They were just a quiet bunch of people. What I'm saying is they learned to help each other to progress. Where we get jealous of each other and don't allow each other to progress. But we feel like you're moving too fast. So we want to pull you back down. We want you to stay here with us. 